limit queer theory and LGBT identities as well, much in the way that religions have always limited theory. But this time, religion maybe does so by being more queer than theory. And queer theory has to figure out how to say this, how to explain it, how to work it, because that's theory's job. So let me close with my question of whether there is a queerness already present in the religious by virtue of its religiosity, by virtue of the god or gods that we know are there, somewhere behind all the artifacts and playthings of our religions. What of the undoing of identity that comes, not from our side via queer theory, but from God's side via all that is, in its enormity and awesomeness, in its contradictory intimacy and fragility? That God, the unreligious God, the unchristian God, the free God, the God that confounds every doctrine, but agrees now and then to wear them lightly. <laughs> that God who contradicts every line of scripture, but now and then fulfills them. That God who accepts every sincere statement of faith, but makes no agreement except to remain and to love without qualification. That God stops queer theory in its tracks. No? That God queers theology, not by authorizing any outsider marginalized group, not by consoling them either, but by loving without reference to identity at all by being God, refusing to acknowledge any difference between you and your enemy, between your religion and another's, between your identity now and your identity then. This sense of God, I think, is pretty queer. The queer God silences queer theory because that God undoes identity before queer theory can even get to it, <laughs> and undoes religion before queer theory can even start. I'm not the first person to think this thought. Maybe in relation to queer theory I am. I don't think Bart really thought in terms of queer theory. <laughs> but I'm not the first person to think about what it means to, to try to conceptualize the God that does not see identity to begin with. That's hard in a time when we are all seeking identities. So finally, in other words, I suppose I'm suggesting that the only religion that can be called queer is the religion that recognizes its own undoing, lives into its undoing, celebrates its undoing, and finds a way to build identities, to not deny identities, but identities that are less solid, less defensive, more supple, more forgiving of change, where communality is a presence, not a boundary an openness, not a rampart. But I have to say, I know, this is asking the very hardest thing of the very most wounded people. I don't even know if it's possible. I only know that, theologically speaking, it's how I understand the gift of queerness to the question of God, of spirit, mystery, of love, forgiveness, 
your faith. Thank you. invite you to stay with us for a minute. <laughs> Dr. Schneider, Laurel, colleague, friend, thanks for visiting us again. Uh, we're just so happy to have you back. Good to be home. Thank you for uh, placing a mirror in front of us uh, to thinking about the ways we currently think. Oh, thank you. And for pressing us beyond that. And mostly thank you for the honor of thinking in front of us and with us. And, and so now is the opportunity uh, for us all um, to help Laurel think further. Uh, so, your questions are, are welcome for the next few minutes. Hey. Um, there are a lot of people smarter than me in this room, so this is a little intimidating. Um, so, <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm caught up in this idea um, and, and this, the, what came to mind pretty soon into your wondering was, um, I was with a Baptist colleague who was talking about inviting people to the communion table, and his welcoming churches really struggles to be like, you know, am I welcome at the table? And he's like, yes. Am I welcome at the table? Yes. And just having to say that to people over and over and over and over. And when they're finally feeling welcome at the table, they say, okay, so what does the table mean? And he says, oh, I have no idea. No idea. Um, and and this, the space for ritual for that kind of, so I'm wondering about ritual and, and all the ways we get into weird mystery without <laughs> maybe knowing that we are in, you know, Sunday morning or crazy stuff like that. So, that's my question. <laughs> well, I, if, I, if I understand the question, uh, or the question that I understand, how's that? Just, yeah, yeah, yeah the right. question yeah. that I understand. <laughs> um, and was everybody able to hear the question? Okay, so... So the question that I understood in that is um, that, that we talk about having welcome. We talk about, about you know, increasing the welcome. Um, and at some point, ritual puts a limit, in a sense, on welcome. Right? And ritual, convention, culture, habit um, put limits on welcome. We all know that, trying to create you know, truly, uh, truly welcoming communities doesn't work because a part of what religion is is also an expression of communal identity. And communal identity is we're sort of the same and you're sort of different. So how do you create welcome without, without becoming just a sort of mush of, ind of indistinction that is boring to everybody, right? That kind. Is that, am I, am I sort of... There you are, David. I'm sort of on call. So, so I, you know, I, I would not want. Part of what I'm trying to think through here is um, the 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 balance between the, the the need for identity and for us to understand that identity is about forming likenesses. I don't believe there is such a thing as an individual identity. It's a, it's a contradiction in terms. If you look up the etymology of the word identity, it's same. So same as what? Same as me? I am same as me? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so my identity, my lesbian identity, is a way of, of signifying my connection to other lesbians. Right? My, um, you know, my religious identity, my race identity, all of that. It's, there, there are others who share portions of that, and that's how identity works. So, and we need identity. I'm not arguing against it at all. What I'm trying to get at is that 
relationship between identity and defensiveness, right? between identity and the protection of identity, which I think is a particularly difficult problem right now, when identity is valorized over the recognition of its vulnerabilities, of its constitutive vulnerabilities. So I'm trying to counterbalance the, the value of identity with the ways in which it lends itself to solidification, ossification, and then I have to start, I have to start defending my identity. Right? You know, if you start saying, well, you're not acting like a lesbian, I'm like, well, okay, I failed. Um, so, <laughs> you know, how, how do I fix that? No, I am. You know? <clears throat> you know, I'll really roll up in my, my diesel truck and I'll show you. I am. <laughs> you know, so what are the signifiers that actually make my lesbianness truly lesbian? Right? And, and, and what do I have to do to defend it against your suspicion that I, I don't quite succeed at that? Um, and, and this, you know, that, that we are all to some extent traitors to our identities because we can't ever fulfill them. That become, instead of that being a source of anxiety, I guess I'm saying, it's a, it, 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 it's, it, it's a source of, of, of being able to become more generous to the fact that none of us, none of us succeed at that. And so where queer, where queer theory goes, ah, I gotcha, you failed at that, there is also the, whoo-hoo, yeah, I failed. This is the queer moment. Mm. Failure is the queer moment. It's the moment when, in a sense, I become most human. And I believe, at least in Christian theology, we have a claim that we, ha we have a God who failed fundamentally, and in that became most human. And in that most humanness, showed us a path to divinity. So that that way, I, to me, I see, I see deep theological resonance in troubling identities. At the same time, at the same time that I want to always recognize, I was saying earlier to someone that, you know, this is this is like airing dirty laundry. You know, you you have to be careful who you who you let see your failures, because they'll be used against you, right? And so, and so to suggest to the marginalized community that, that what's needed is the undoing of identity, at the very moment you get a seat at the table, there's something wrong with that, right? There's, there, there is, I, I acknowledge that. I, I fully acknowledge that. And yet, this is where this sort of intellectually speaking we need to be thinking about this. We need to be thinking about the limits to our identity claims, not as a way of undoing the hard-won gains, but rather as a way of figuring out how not to repeat the mistakes of the oppressors. That's, that's, that, that's the challenge of that, that, that I see, and that I think queer theory is, is, is particularly helpful um, in, in helping us to see. That kind of went, you know, afield from your question, but that's, yeah. Hi, Laurel. Hi. <laughs> um, I, I think there's something really salvific in the point you're making right now, and I don't want to miss it, and I'm having trouble, like, um, thinking of an example in a life, um, around me. For some reason, I totally get the Jesus example, but I'm wondering if I can like take a page out of Dr. Butler's book and say, tell me a story about failing an identity, failing your identity, and the, the beauty in it, the gift in it. Yeah, that, that would work better. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, I, 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 it may take me a minute because you know I'm so I'm so you know I'm so caught up in in in, in my theory self um, that that makes that a little a little I, I don't want to take too much time um, because part of what I'm wanting to say is you know every time I try let, let, let me do it this way I um, I fail. I think I fail every single day, um, 
at being a spouse. Uh, and there are all kinds of expectations, identity expectations of what that means. Um, and so I am having to make what that means every day. Now, fortunately, I have a spouse who never fails at being a spouse because she's fabulous and wonderful. <laughs> um, but, you know, but, but they're, they're <laughs> hi, honey. Um, <laughs> But, but, there, but there are, so, so there's that, I, you know, I, I can think of so many ways that, um, that I, I, I don't, I don't, you know, I, I, we, can, we can think about identities as a kind of ideal, you know, there's, there's, there's the ideal of, um, you know, of, of what it means to be um, a lesbian, there's, a, there's an ideal of what it means to be a spouse, there's an ideal of what it means to be a sister, there's an ideal of what it means, um, you know, I have, a, I have, I have, I fail. You know, I fail at um, at being white regularly. Um, now we could take that in, in in two different ways. We could say, oh, good, right? You know, that that's a good thing. That that that's actually progress. That's progress, Laurel. Um, but I also, but that, but I'm not failing. I mean, when I say I fail at being white, I also, uh, you know, I, so I, I I I would like to. Hmm, I'm getting myself all. Tangled up because I'm thinking of so many different things, but but there is there is a you know a whiteness that I want to be. Um, I don't want to not be white because I want to be who I am or who I am expressing myself to be, right? But I fail at that whiteness regularly. Does that make sense? And so, um, and I, I would love to come up with some really great, you know, anecdotes because I have millions of them. You know, they, 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 I do have millions of them. I'm not, you know, but it's, it's more that trying, trying then to get at the value of this failure is not a failure of being me. It's not a failure of being human. It's not a failure at being present. It is, I believe, I can be more present if I stop trying to be these identities. Does that make sense? So if I can be more present and not defend identities, you know, then I'm not constantly being like, well, do, do, I, do I look like the professor? You know, am I? Okay. Do, do, do I have an intelligent answer to your question? Uh, you know. Do, do you know what I mean? That, 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 that what I'm doing is I'm thinking about how to be this thing, whatever this thing is. And I'm regularly told um, you know, by people who love me and people who don't love me so much that, you know, yeah, you failed you know, at this. And I have to then you know, work with that as, well, are, you know, are they somebody that I trust and believe or are they somebody I can go, yeah, mm hmm Right, but that's a different thing. What I'm trying to get at is, I want to suggest as a theologian, when I construct a concept of God, I want to be aware of the ways that I am constantly projecting my desires onto the divine, which also means projecting my identity desires onto the divine, which also then puts God into a box, right? So that God cannot actually be God. God cannot be that which undoes the identities that I try to be. And, and, and says, I love you anyway, right? That, that, what does it mean to love someone beyond the identities? You know, what does it mean to love someone beyond the label of spouse? What does it mean to love someone beyond the label of sibling? What does it mean, you know, to love someone beyond the label of enemy? That one's hard, right? Mm -hmm. But if we can, if we can think about, about, about God, if we, can, if we can start talking theologically, this is the theologian speaking to theologians now, right? I, I mean, we're, we're, we're talking at a level that I don't necessarily intend to be preachable. That, that's not the point at the moment. The point is working out these, these specific challenges of how the pieces fit together um, so that we can then construct preachable moments out of that. Right? So I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not actually trying to, 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 you know, to do both of those tasks at the moment. I, I, am, I am speaking to you as fellow scholars at, at the sticking point of this, of this problem. Does uh, that kind of get at what you were hoping for? Yeah. 
I have three questions that I've seen, and I think we're going to only be able to do those. If the questioners and the answerers would be uh, disciplined, <laughs> we can do those three. <laughs> and for the rest of your questions, really we will continue the conversation in a more informal way. Okay. About two-thirds of the way through your address, Laurel, I realized that you were saying that Bart was queering theology. And this is a thought that I never thought <laughs> that I would have. And even if I had thought that I would think it, I never would have thought it. But I thought it, and I, and I want to thank you for that because it's, it's apparently true. And, um, but in terms of your constructive thesis, I was thinking about Mary Potter Engel's Sin, Evil, and the Violation of the Vulnerable, and how Mary goes through those categories of the identities abused women form when they're trying to survive, right. and then how they have to be vulnerable to letting those identities go in order to live beyond the abuse. And it's where I went in, in, in trying to think constructively yeah. with yeah. you. Yeah. And, and so I thought it would simply add it to the mix because I think that's what you're inviting us to, or an aspect of what you're inviting us to think about. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. Is that short enough for you? Yeah. Oh, sure, it's perfect, perfect. Yeah, that's, that's, right. that's true. Hi, Laurel. Good to yeah. see you. Uh, in many respects, it seems to me you're a very sort of orthodox queer. And <laughs> what I what anxiety. I mean, <laughs> that's an identity I hadn't quite. What I mean by that is you're sort of it's there is this return uh, to specificity or subjectivity or what I might even call identity in queer theory. Uh, Leo Bersani, Kaja Silverman, David Halperin that's trying to sort of ask what's queer about gay or what's queer about identity. And it's sort of like asking what would Jesus be minus Jesus' Judaism? Um, it's sort of hard to think about that, what that would be like. And that seems to be what queer theory is doing. There's nothing really historical about it. Um, there's nothing really incarnational really about what you're talking about. So there's some, sort of um, ignoring the very real lives of mm. gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people and realizing that mm. you can have a, a queer identity that's actually quite successful, a universal singularity, an identity that opens up, that's learnable, uh, so on and so forth. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And I, and I appreciate, I actually appreciate the challenge that you're putting forward. Um, because I can see, I can certainly see where what I'm working on could be abstracted from the lived lives where identities function, you know, in day-to-day -day ways, right? That I, I, I can see that. Um, I think that is a, uh, a real danger of the questions that I'm raising. It's not where I want to go. Um, I, I, I don't see any value in abstracting um, lived lives too much. On the other hand, on the other hand, I am I am trying to think about how my own identity has changed over time. Right? My embodied existence, my my lived life cannot be reduced to a list of stable identities. Um, and given that, given that alone, I think that, that there, there, are, there are ways that theology can speak to that instability via concepts of divinity as a sort of blessing of the instability of lived life, lived identities. I also think that theory, 
theory always has to follow life. And, and the lived lives of lesbians, gays, bisexual, trans, and intersex people is showing that identity, identity, that solid, stable identities are conventions. And need, we need better theory to reflect the lived lives of folk who are in real relationships and communities. So, so the pushback I want to give on that is I don't think theory ever drives life. I think life drives theory. And, the, and, and where, where queer theory helps most is the interrogation and the, um, and the tracing of the lines of power that function in sexualized ways in social, in, in social formations. That's its, that's its best work. If that can be also helpful to theology beyond criticism, then, then, it, then it, it needs to give us something to think about with regard to the nature of the divine. So I see, I guess, if, if I've understood you right, I agree that I'm walking a fine line of making claims that don't, that, that in a sense dismiss even 